Welcome to Arkansas Week alongside Eric Kane, Rob Lewis, and Brent Hubbs. I'm Austin Price for the Rocky Top Roundtable. And guys, Tennessee, by a week, now head into another road game uh, against an opponent that is very capable of beating you if you allow them to get off to a hot start, kind of like Oklahoma. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, I think it's a 60-minute deal. You can survive, but you, you don't want them to get in a rhythm is, is what you want to avoid, and, and you don't want that crowd to get into it. Uh, Oklahoma's been a solid starting team, uh, Rob, but at home at night there, that's a sneaky loud place if you let them get going. Well, they have a great fan base, and they'll be, I mean, they'll be, you know, loud, they'll be, they'll be into it, and, you know, they're also going to be desperate. I mean, they don't want to start out, you know, w with another loss, you know, in the SEC, a home loss after, you know, dropping one at Texas A&M that was winnable. So I, th I think Arkansas is an underrated environment, but that only lasts so long. You know, and you know, the, the team is going to have to give them something to cheer about. Yeah, I think overall Arkansas has got some pieces. It just doesn't all together, if you kind of throw it together and look at the team aspect overall, I'm not sure it's there yet, at least the caliber of Tennessee. You can run the football well. Uh, defensively, they've done some things well. But, you know, the passing game, the quarterback, there's some shortcomings there. So Tennessee goes in there and handles business, plays the way that Tennessee can, then it shouldn't be an issue. But, of course, you can't sleepwalk through it. I think you could have absolutely called it a trap game if they had played this game a week, uh, this past weekend, you know, coming off the Oklahoma emotional game. But having a bye week and the fact that this group is, you know, in a lot of ways got some key veterans in it that I think won't allow it to kind of, you know, just kind of go through the motions. Well, I mean, listen, it's hard to get and be at your peak for 12 weeks out of the year. It's just hard. I don't care if you got two bye weeks, one bye week, whatever you got. It's, it's hard to get 18 to 22 year olds to play at their emotional best every week. So if they had played last week, you're right. They would not have been nearly as amped up for that one. The bye week helps. I think it also helps that Arkansas is coming off two straight SEC games, Eric, where, uh, I mean, you, you, they were on the road at Auburn in a physical game. They were in a mm -hmm. physical game at Texas A&M. Now they catch Tennessee off of a bye. It's probably not a great time to catch Tennessee if you're an Arkansas fan because Tennessee is coming off the bye. Yeah, no doubt. You look at that, Ar or you look at that Auburn game, and they had to force five turnovers just to win that football game, so it took a lot out of you last week against A&M, of course, shortcomings offensively, had three different leads in that football game, and you blew all three and lost it late. So, yeah, I completely agree. Tennessee coming off the bye week, you know, Arkansas kind of going through it in SEC play to begin the year, it, it's probably not a good spot for them. This is a, a, a game where I feel like, you know, they've had to go with some 12 personnel for different reasons, uh, you know, just because of the matchup at NC State and trying to protect at Oklahoma. I want to say they're not going to have as much of that this week. I think there's going to be a lot more three receiver sets in this game, which means I think opportunities for Nico, Rob. Yeah, I agree. I mean, and I think you're, I think the bye week will have been really good for Nico coming off what was by far the, the toughest test he faced. I mean, he had some struggles, but I think mostly related to protection. I think it's great for young guys. I mean, not just quarterbacks, but especially quarterbacks. After you've been in a test like that, and you haven't played a lot to be able to sit back, be in the field room for a week, and really, you know, kind of get into it. What you've seen in, in those first four games without getting ready for that next opponent. I think that's a huge benefit for a young guy. And, and I think I'll, I'll be surprised if we don't see, you know, the best version of Nico yet on Saturday. You must, you must know all the tips on the offensive tackle rotation for Tennessee this weekend. You're feeling pretty good about where that thing's at right now. Uh, you know, I just think if you're, matchup, gonna, if you're not if you're not going to be in too tight, you must feel really good about where they are on the edges. I, I think the matchup lends itself to more three receiver sets. We would hope so, but I, again, I think the question is how well can they protect on the sure. edge? As if they can protect on the edge and be effective doing that, then I, I think you're exactly right. It, it is a more traditional look, Eric, a 4-2-5. Mm -hmm. there, there's not three-man front, some unusual things. And I don't think Arkansas can drop back into that drop coverage mm -hmm. like NC State because I don't think they want to get beat up like that in the run game. So I do think they'll be more aggressive. If Tennessee can protect, that I do think Tennessee offensively can do a lot of things. Yeah, I think Landon Jackson's his name. Edge yep. player had a couple right. of sacks a, a, a week ago. He's a really good player, so that's going to be a challenge. If I'm watching that tape from Tennessee, knowing that you had some backups in there, but I'm look, licking my chops, right, trying to get after it. If I'm Arkansas defensively, I, I'm with you, Brent. I'm, I'm trying to confuse Nico. I'm trying to bring some pressure. I'm trying to say, okay, if you're going to beat me, much like we talked about going into Oklahoma and NC State, beat me over the top. I'm going to try to slow down what you do well, and, of course, that's running the football. So. I think whoever's playing tackle, you know, it's Lance Hurd, John Campbell, Dane Davis, Larry Johnson, got to be ready for a lot of games up front. Yeah, and I think Arkansas in the secondary, you have to play some games because I think in the secondary, I feel like Arkansas is a little bit feast or famine. 
They've turned some people over with some interceptions, but yeah. they've given up some big plays too. So I feel like there's plays to be made there if you could protect, which I think is what you're getting at with more of the three man or more of the three receiver sets. This is the first time Tennessee's going to go against some of these players that have defected out, right? Um, I don't know that Danico Slaughter is individually going to make a bunch of plays, or Addison Nichols is going to be some masher up front. But does, how does their knowledge of what Tennessee wants to do help? Arkansas in a game like this? I think it helps Slaughter more in the defense Agreed. more than it helps Addison Nichols yeah. and where they are offensively because Danico knows pace of play. He's practiced against the pace uh, and, and knows some of the tricks that they want to do because he scrimmaged against it. So I do think it's a help to Danico. How well can they convey that and communicate that across the board? We'll, we'll see. But but I think if you're looking for where's at a, at a where is it a help? I think it's a help more on defense with Danico than it is Addison. Speaking of Tennessee's defense, you know, a, a really healthy unit playing really good football. I mean, you know, where do they, where do you expect them to pick up against a, a, a an offense that again shows flashes, especially when Green's able to get outside the pocket and maybe keep his eyes down the field and go try to hit deep shots. I, mean, I like this matchup a lot for Tennessee. I mean, everybody, we're going to talk about his legs all week, and that's legit. He can hurt you if he gets outside the pocket and extend plays, but he's not very accurate. Uh, you're just right over 50% completion percentage. He's thrown five interceptions already on the season with just four touchdowns. He can make some plays for sure, but if you heat him up, if you, if you make him, you know, make decisions quick, make him feel heat, I, I think that's. I mean, I think it's a really good matchup for Tennessee. Yeah, and I don't want this to sound wrong. Like, I mean, you got to go in there and play your game. You can't go in there and sleepwalk. Again, we're saying all that. I mean, Arkansas can can hurt you if you let them. But this type of style, I'm not saying that, you know, Taylor Green is Jalen Milrow, but he's kind of a bigger guy. He's longer. He's got mobility. So it's kind of a go in there and take care of business, and you can see how you do against Taylor Green knowing what's going to come two weeks later in, in Jalen Milrow. But I, I think, too, like he's going to make some plays, right? He's going, to, he's going to make some first downs. He'll scramble and extend plays and all that. But if Tennessee's defensive line and front seven just continue to press and press, he's going to gift you a turnover or two in this football game because that's who he's been. He's thrown for a lot of yards so far this season, but he's turned the football over more than five times. You go back to that Oklahoma State game, Brent. They had 700 yards or whatever it was. Should have won the game. And only scored 30 points in regulation. Like they, they, they move it between the 20s a lot, but as far as cashing in, they've not been as productive as they could be. No, no doubt. And they, I think they scored 21 of those 30 points in the first, in the first quarter. Yeah. Not a very know. good red zone team. Yeah, they, they haven't been red zone. Tennessee's got to be better than the red zone team. Here's my thing with Green, though, when you look at them. Every, I've seen him play twice pretty extensively. I watched a good bit of the A&M game, and I watched a lot of that Oklahoma State game. He loves to bail right. Yeah, he does. He loves to bail right. Take that point guard, you've, he does right. Or you've, got, you've got to take away his right hand, so to speak. Do you line James Spears on that side? I, I, whoever you line up on that side has got to play contain. They can't get caught inside because he's much more comfortable throwing when he's rolling right. And his first instinct is to go right, it feels like. So you've got to protect that, keep him in the pocket or force him left where he can't get square to throw the football. Don't let him get right, because when he goes right, that's where he kind of gets into that backyard improv type football, which could cause you some problems. All right, I want each of your key, not keys, key. Give me your key to the Tennessee getting a win, Eric. Key to Tennessee getting a win, it's, it's simplistic, but just run the football. I think if you run the football, you're at your best offensively, and everything builds off of that. Tennessee's been able to do that so far. So it's basic, it's football 101, but run the football with Dylan Sampson to Sean Bishop. Behind that offensive line, I think Tennessee's going to be in good shape. Yeah, I'll keep it really simple, too. Just turnovers. I, th I think Tennessee is substantially better. Don't gift Arkansas extra possessions. I think Tennessee is capable of scoring a lot more points. Don't give Arkansas short fields, easy, easy possessions. Tackle Green on third down. Went on third down with him. Don't let him squirt out and get nine yards on third and seven and extend a drive. Tackle him on that down. You're going to try to get him all in third long. That's your goal. When you get him there, you got to finish it. You cannot allow that, you know, just run around stuff with him. So get him down on the ground on third and long. Yeah, alignment and assignment for me. Have good eyes. Again, to kind of your point, you know, don't, don't let them, you know, pop out things that, you know, just because you made mistakes, you know, mentally and busted on the defensive side of the ball. I think if Tennessee can avoid that, Tennessee, I think, wins this game by a couple of scores, uh, you know, coming up on Saturday night over in Fayetteville, Arkansas. For Eric Kane, Rob Lewis, and Brent Hubbs, I'm Austin Price.